In this video we're going to talk about the application bar. It's similar to a menu. It has both icons at the very top that just peek over the bottom and then an ellipsis button that when the user clicks it it opens up and shows a number of textual menu options beneath it. And as a developer we can use these to uh, enact some operation on the given XAML page or catapult the user to a whole different area within our application. As developers, the choice is ours. The nice thing about the application bar is that it stays mostly hidden and stays out of the way of the basic usage of the application, but when the user needs those extra options, they can be easily uh, retrieved through that ellipsis button. So what we're going to do in this video is start by building an application that has an application bar, and we're going to respond to the click events for both the icons and for the menu options. And then we're also going to talk about where you can find some icons uh, that you can use within your applications. So as you can see, I've already created a new project called App Bar. I've done nothing with it up to this point. The very first thing I want to do is define a folder that's going to hold our icons. So I'm going to right click the project name and select Add New Folder. I'm going to call this new folder Images. And then what I want to do is go to Windows Explorer and I'm going to navigate to find some images that are already on my hard drive. Whenever I installed Visual Studio 2010 Express for Windows Phone, the SDK was installed for the Windows Phone 7 as well, which has a number of icons that we can use. And they're pretty neat. They're themed for the phone. So if you're on a 64-bit a operating system, you'll find them in the Program Files x86 folder. If you are on a 32-bit operating system, then you're going to find them in the program files. But since I'm on the 64-bit, I'm going to drill down this first layer. Either way, you should find the Microsoft SDKs subfolder. Then we want to go to the Windows Phone subfolder. Then we want to go to the version 7.0 subfolder. Then we want to go to the Icons subfolder. And here you'll see three uh, folders, Dark Light and Vector. I'm going to look for the dark folder and there's a number of PNG files that have been created as icons that are properly sized for our application for the app bar. What I want to do is look for the minus and the new. I'll hold down my shift key on my keyboard to select both of these. One will give us a minus sign, the other will give us a plus sign. That'll be good enough for our purposes as we build our little sample application. And I'm going to drag these down to where Visual Studio is in the uh, is in my application bar and then I'm going to drop them into the images folder in the solution explorer that I just created and now these files become part of my solution pretty neat little trick the next thing that I want to do is select both of these files and I want to change the build action from resource to content and it's important that you do this otherwise you're going to spend about an hour of your life pulling your hair out trying to determine why exactly uh, your application can't find these images. Okay, I've learned the hard way, unfortunately. Uh, but at any rate, let's go ahead and move on. Now that we have some images in our application, we just simply need to reference them in our app bar. So let's make some room here because as we noted in yesterday's content, we have an application bar already created for us here it's just been commented out. So I'm going to remove those comments and we've now got an application bar. If you want to preview what it looks like, you can see here that now our designer has the indication, the little area for these for these icons, right? And it also has uh, the menu bar items. In fact, let's go ahead and run the application to see what we get out of the box before we do any real work here. Okay, so our application eventually comes up and we can see there are two icons defined. However, they have little X's through them. Uh, and the reason for that, this is what you're going to see if for whatever reason the app bar definition in XAML can't find the references for those PNG files. There, there is no such app bar underscore button one PNG or app bar underscore button two PNG in my solution, in my project so it's going to represent those as little X's. All right. Uh, if I were to click the ellipsis button it does display the two menu items that are available that are also defined here in my XAML. So now as a developer if I want to include this functionality in I'm, I'm pretty far along the road to, to integrating this into my app. 
all I had to do was just uncomment out the application bar that was already defined and now I need to just change the references to some of these images for example. So uh, let's go ahead first of all and get our images included in here. So I'm just going to edit the XAML directly and I'm going to type in minus whoops minus dot rest dot png and I'll do the same to the other icon new rest dot png alright so that should solve half of my issues here and then let's go ahead and rename these to uh, contacts and let's name this one calendar alright and here I'm going to also change the default text for each of the buttons from button 1 and button 2 to something like um, remove and add kind of makes more sense in the context of our little example here so let's run the application again alright so now we can see our icons appear the minus sign and the plus sign and as I use the ellipsis button you can see in very small text rem the text remove is under the minus sign and add is under the plus sign also you can see contacts and calendar menu options now appear one thing to notice uh, remove add contacts calendar I capitalized the text properties but they were uh, made lowercase whenever used inside of my app bar so that's just something that we need to keep in mind it's just the styling for the phone to keep everything looking consistent it's a nice little feature okay but now where do we go from here well clearly we're gonna wanna make some changes to um, our application so that when somebody clicks one of these icon buttons or menu items something actually happens in our app and as you may have guessed it's as simple as this all I need to do is just type in click equals and then I get that new event handler pop open and you can see where it creates an application bar icon button click I can do the same for the one below it I can create a new event handler so it gives it an underscore click one I could give these completely different names if I really wanted to same is true with the menu if I select click equal now I can either choose a new event handler or choose an existing event handler. And so for any of these, all I need to do is right click, select navigate to event handler, and now I can do some important, interesting work here within my application. Okay. All right, a few things to note before we close this lesson. First of all, you can only define four icon bar buttons within your app bar. What happens if you try to define more than that? Well, as you can see, currently I've modified the existing application to have four. I'm going to paste in one more application bar icon button. And when I do, notice that it explodes with the blue squiggly line, letting me know that there are just simply too many items in the list. You can see a little pop-up near the bottom there. So by removing this, I'll just hit Control Z. All is fine again. The same is not true, however, with menu items. You can have as many as you want. Here you can see I've defined 12 menu items. And so as I run the application, let's see what happens. I'm going to hit the little ellipsis to see the menu items, and then I'm going to start scrolling up and down. So you can see, using a scroll bar on the side, I'm able to see all the menu options available. So this gives me a lot of flexibility with the number of commands that I want to allow for the user to use. Okay, so very short video, uh, very easy to understand conceptually, but it's great that we can control this app bar and we can now use it within our applications. Uh, in this lesson we learned a couple of things. Where to find those free icon resources from Microsoft for common application needs, plus, minus, um, save file, things of that nature. Secondly, how to enable the application bar by just removing the code comments in our XAML pages. Third, we learned how to modify the properties of icon buttons and menu items to display our own application specific options uh, using XAML specifically. We could also do it using the properties window. I didn't demonstrate that. 
Uh, we looked at how to handle a click event the same way that we would handle one if it were a button or a hyperlink button or any other control that we've used up to this point. And then we also talked about the limitations of icon buttons and then also how menu items work when displaying more than fit on the current screen. It allows the user to scroll up and down to see the additional options. Okay, great. So we'll pick it up here in the next video. Thank you.